Hello everyone, welcome to the online lecture video series for the subject Python application programming for the semester 6 according to video syllabus. So today we'll be learning about files that is chapter number 7 according to module 2. So in module 2 we have three chapters chapter 5, chapter 6 and chapter 7. Chapter 5 deals with iterations, chapter 6 deals with strings and the last chapter from this module is files. So this particular chapter deals with how to open files, how to read through files, how to search through a file. So what are the different types of files like text files and also it allows you to, the user to choose the file name. Also we'll be learning about the try and accept conditions. So when you're trying to open a file which does not exist, so instead of uh, telling exclusively in an error, instead of that, so using try and accept will be more understandable by the user. So we'll do that using the try and accept, that is the catching exceptions method. And lastly, we will learn how to write files using the write mode W. So opening files, see, uh, let us assume your system, a laptop or a computer. So if you want to open a file, so you go to that particular drive, open the folder. So within the folder, whatever file is present, you are going to click on that file and open it. Correct. So here also, when we want to read or write a file, say on your hard drive, we must first open the file. Opening the file communicates with your operating system, which knows where the data for each file is stored. When you open a file, you are asking the operating system to find the file by name and make sure the file exists. So in this file, we are going to open a text file called as inbox text, which has all the email information. And also this inbox text file should be stored in the same folder where we save the Python programs. So this is a file handler. So you can see here what does a file handler can do. So it can open the file, close the file, read the file. And if any modifications to be done to the file, you can do so using the write mode. So here is an example to open a file called as inbox text. So we are using the F hand that is the file handler and file open command that is open. So within the parenthesis, the file inbox text is the file name which we are going to open. So and when we print this file handler, you can see the name of the file is inbox text which you are going to open and it is in reading mode. So if you are trying to open a file which is not present, so then you get an error like this, no such file or directory. So here I'm going trying to open stuff.txt, so which is not present in the folder where the Python programs are saved. So it gives me an error like this, telling that no such file or directory. So next topic is text files and lines. So a text file can be thought of as a sequence of lines, much like a Python string. Like what is a string? It is a sequence of characters. So here text files see like your word document, a paragraph, a poem, a lesson, a chapter in a textbook. So all these are the examples of text files. So what do these text files contain? So they contain sequence of lines. So this, for example, let us take this particular text file called as inbox text. So which records the mail activity from various individuals. So here you can see, so this particular text file consists of all the email information. So you know the email information like from whom you receive, and the path 
and when it was received or when you had sent the mail so and also to which person you sent the mail from and the subject so that is what is this email about and also the details of the emails so this is uh, the email information that is present in the text file So these files are in a standard format for a file containing multiple mail messages. The lines which start with from separates the messages that uh, lines which start with from colon. So you can see the difference here, right? So this from colon and from are different. So when you search for lines which starts with from, so you get only lines which start with from. And when you search the lines which start with from colon, so the answer returned is the lines only that start with from colon. So these two are different. So we have to note the difference here, both are not same. So to break the files into lines, there is a special character that is the new line character that is slash n. So here we have some of the examples for slash n. So you can see here. So this string that is hello world. So has this new line character that is slash n. So within this string. So when I print stuff, you can see here. So as it is, the string is printed. So when I print stuff, you can see when I just type stuff and execute this statement. So you can see as it is, the string is printed. So when I print this particular stuff, so you can see the slash and when used with print statements acts as a new line character. So you can see the same string that is hello and world. So hello separated by world. So after hello, there is slash and character. So after the slash and the world will go to the next line so similarly you can see x slash and y so again when i print this stuff you can see x and y separated in two lines so but new line character is counted as a character so when i type length of stuff when i see the length of stuff find the length of this particular character that is string so you can see the answer being three so that is the number of characters in this particular string so it is x slash n and y so that is why the length of this string is three so next topic is reading files so how to read through files so suppose in this example, we want to count the number of lines in a text file. So how many lines of uh, sequence of lines are present in this particular text file. So here, while the file handle does not contain the data for the file, it is quite easy to construct for a, a for loop to read through and count each of the lines in a file. So here you can see in this example, so the file handler is used to open a file called as mboxshot.txt. So mboxshot.txt consists of email information. So also count temporary variable is used, which is initialized to zero. For loop is used in this example. So this particular line is the iteration variable in for this particular file called as mboxshot.txt. So what it does is, so this for loop traverses through each of the line in the mboxshot.txt file and it counts each of the lines by incrementing one by one. And finally, it prints the line count. Let us execute this program and see in the Python shell.
So you can see when I execute that particular program that is inbox short dot text text file consists of 1910 lines lines of text. So that is the usage of for loop in files. So here you can see this is the example that particularly counts the number of files in mbox short.txt. So when we executed this program, we got the answer as 1910 lines in mbox short.txt file. So next topic is searching through a file. So if we want to parse through the file so that is parsing files so if we are interested in some lines which we are interested in so then we can do so using this searching through file again using a for loop so here in this example you can see file handler to open the inbox short dot text so count variable is used which is initialized to zero so for loop is also used line is the iteration variable so what it does is this for loop traverses each and every line in the mbox short.txt. So there is an if condition here. So within this text file for each line, so if this condition checks whether line that starts with from colon. So if any line which starts with from colon, so we are going to print that line. So that is the program about. So let us execute this program and check. So this is the program. So when I execute the program, so you can see the output here. So which prints the lines that start with from colon. So that is the output for this program. So here we have another example of usage of R strip. So the same text file is being used that is inbox short dot text. So for loop traverses each and every line in the text file. So and line dot r strip. So here what happens is the white space between each and every line is stripped off in this example. So let us see the example. Let us see the execution of this particular program. So you can see here the same previous example. So where there was a space between each and every line is stripped off. So this particular program so tells that R strip strips of the white space at the right side of the sentence. So that is the usage of R strip. So we'll go to the next topic that is letting the user choose the file name. So already we have studied about this built-in function that is the input, input built-in function in Python programming language where the user is prompted to enter something from the keyboard. So we really do not want to have to edit our Python code every time we want to process a different file. So in order to uh, ask the user to enter the file name. So we are going to use the function input. So let us see the usage of this function input. 
So here you can see in this example, so F name, file handler name, input. So it is prompting the user to enter the file name and F handler is used to open the particular file name which the user has entered. So you can see that is the usage of prompting the user uh, to ask to enter the file name. And the last topic, so that is the last second topic that is using try, accept and open. So you can see here. So in this particular example, so the user enters the file name like missing.txt. So he found the missing.txt file is not present in the folder where the Python programs are saved. So you get an error like this, no such file or directory. So instead of typing this, so again, if you type anything like this also, you get no such file or directory in this particular example. So instead of telling it exclusively in the error form, so we can just give, use the try and accept to exclusively tell the user that this particular file is not present. So here in this example, you can see uh, input function is used, which prompts the user to enter the file name. So try. So if that particular file name is not present, so then exception will be printed like file cannot be opened. So that is the usage of try and accept for catching the exception. And the last topic in this chapter, that is writing files. So to write a file, you have to open it in mode W as a second parameter. So you can see whichever file we want to open and modify it. So here in this example, output.txt is the file to be opened and modified. So we have to use this w mode w that is write mode as the second parameter. Thank you.